Good morning and welcome once again. It is Wednesday, time for our gathering. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that once again you've drawn us together to consider your, how great you are and how much we need you each day. Lord, remind us once again of your love, of your grace, and of your peace as we meet together and consider your words for us this day. Amen. Today, we have a special guest. Nancy is with us and will bring us our message. Nancy, okay. bless us. Thank you, Jim. Yes, I'm always honored whenever Jim asks me to just bring a, some thoughts to share with you. And uh, I have already been praying for you this morning. Uh, earlier, just thinking of each one of you, I don't know you all by name, but I do know someone who does know you by name and he sees you as you're going about your daily life, as you get the kids off to school, as you, you know, see your spouse off to work, as you, maybe you're caring for a loved one and you get them settled in for the day. I, God sees you, you know. I know some of the people here. I um, worked here, resigned about, almost two years ago, but there are lots of new people here. But, you know, God knows you by name. And it says in the Bible, that God created you, that he formed you, that he has called you by name. So your mom and dad may have named you, but God already knew the name you were going to be given. Isn't that a wonderful thought? And so today I just wanted to go over quickly, just um, you're familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Some people call it the Our Father. And I just wanted to go through that just to give you the format as to um, what Jesus desires when we pray. Because lots of people say, well, I don't know how to pray. But he just gives us a simple outline in this prayer that's found in Matthew 6, verse 9 through, um, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, I believe, yes. And so I just wanted to go through that so you can just, you know, keep that in mind as you pray. So the first thing he tells us to do our Father who art in heaven, is to recognize him as the Holy One. Holy, holy, holy is he. He is maker and creator of all the universe. What a wonderful thought. So he is due our honor. He's due our respect. And then it says, hallowed be thy name. Again, we give him praise. We acknowledge him as, as set apart above all creation that he is our father. It says that, uh, let's see, that, well, as I mentioned, that we direct all our attention to him. We focus on him as our loving father. And then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that we desire to put aside our own desires. We want his kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy to fill our land to fill our life isn't that wonderful that's what we each want and we desire that his kingdom comes because there's lots of things in our environment in our world that we want to see changed but we want his will to be done we want to align with what he desires for us and for our world around us and we pray that when we say on earth as it is in heaven, because the word says that eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor even can our mind imagine what the Lord has prepared for us in heaven. And we have that promise as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have that promise of eternal life. But he wants goodness here. That's his will for us. That's what he desires for us. And then we go on and pray, give us this day our daily bread. And I know when I worked here, oftentimes we were involved praying for people who were going to have uh, surgical procedures done. And so the chaplaincy department still does that. But many times people, when I would talk about, give us this day our daily bread, what is it that they needed for that day? They needed peace, they needed assurance, they needed confidence in someone outside of themselves. 
And so that's what we prayed. God gave them their daily bread because that's what they needed. Many times after prayer, we would see patients' faces just fill with peace and a trust in God that they didn't have before we prayed. So that's a promise of God as we seek his face. And then it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And trespasses or debts, as some of us have been taught, are sins, things that have been out of the will of God that we've done. And he tells us to, that we are to forgive those people too, that he gives us forgiveness and mercy so willingly as we come to him. But then we ourselves turn around and forgive those who have offended us. And one of Jesus' disciples asked, well, do we do it like seven times if somebody offends us seven times? And Jesus said, you do it 70 times seven. Basically, he's saying, you keep forgiving. It comes to 490, but we keep giving. We keep forgiving and loving and putting aside those people, those things that we feel slighted. It could be just a, a simple misunderstanding, but we extend grace and mercy just as God has, has done that to us. And then it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we pray, God, guide our steps, lead our thoughts, teach us your ways of love, that when we see, that we see with his eyes of compassion and care to people. I wanted to just share quickly because the Our Father, or the Lord's Prayer, as you may refer to it, is very powerful. I talked to a cousin today, and my aunt is 92 years old, and she has Alzheimer's. And my, my cousin was asking me one day, how can I connect to her? What can I do? How can I remind her about God, even in the world where she's living, in that world of dementia? And I, as I suggested, I said, you know, pray to our Father. Have her pray that, because that will come back. And sure enough, when she prayed it, she, her mom started praying it and could join along. And so every day, every time she visits, they end their visit with the Our Father. And she says, she was telling me, she said, Nan, you cannot believe the change I see in my mom when we pray. That she closes her eyes, she grabs my hand, and we pray. And she leads it. Her mother, 92 years old with dementia leads that prayer. And so my cousin is comforted knowing that there is a divine connection there that her mother is experiencing with God. And so right now I want to just pray the Lord's Prayer out of the compassion or the Passion Translation, I'm sorry. And basically this is just another translation. It's the same principle as the Lord's Prayer, but I wanted to pray it and pray it as a prayer over each one of you. So I'm going to start, and again, this is the Passion Translation, chapter six, verse nine. And so we pray, our Father, dwelling in the heavenly realm, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Each one of these precious precious ones that work here at Sierra View and anyone else that may see this video. Manifest your kingdom realm, God, and cause your every purpose to be filled on earth and in our lives. Just as it is fulfilled in heaven, we individually acknowledge you as provider for all we need every day. Forgive us the wrongs that we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you, God, are the king who rules with power and with glory in our lives forever and ever. Amen. And amen means so be it. 
it is done. And I pray that with confidence and boldness before the throne of God on our behalf. Amen. God bless you.